thank you so much for joining us. Um, so Soroy, I just wanted to know a little bit more about where you grew up and what your childhood was like. Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, so I grew up, uh, I was born in London and I grew up in London. Um, my parents are I'm from a mixed sort of race background in the sense that my mum's originally from France and my father from Pakistan, but he was born in Kenya. So interestingly, my parents were not an influence creatively. They, they don't, they never just sort of practice any art forms. However, my grandmother, so my mother's father, loved watercolor painting and he would take me to museums both in Paris when I went to visit him in Paris and also when he'd come and visit us in London, we would, he would actually take me to exhibitions and um, he really encouraged me to memorize the biographies of uh, in particular impressionist painters and would re reward me with francs for every um, artist I could remember. And That's so beautiful. And for those influences at an early stage, were they a part of you know, your process and your journey to becoming an artist or at that early stage, where, at what stage and what juncture in your life did you make the decision to pursue a career in the arts? Um, probably about the age of nine. So quite early. <laughs> I knew quite, uh, yes. Um, and that was just because at school, um, one of my works was selected for a regional exhibition and I really enjoyed making the work. It was, it was a Chinese lantern, so it was sculptural. And I thought, wow, I actually like this and people will enjoy it too. So it was like, okay, maybe this is something I want to pursue more. Um, so it was very early on that I knew that I wanted to be in the creative arts, but didn't know exactly what that meant or anything like that. And how did that journey unfold from that stage winning, winning an award and being recognised for your artistic expression? How did that journey progress to, you know, your later years? Well, I helped to have good teachers along the way. So even at primary school, um, my teachers, even my music teacher, for example, would encourage me in the arts. They could see that I had this tendency towards the arts. It um, seems that your exploration of Arabic calligraphy and Islamic art and, you know, and, and the degree that you went for in the end and the academia that you pursued, how did it feel to be really pursuing this against a backdrop of really anti-Islamic sentiment more broadly in the world, given the, the political and social and cultural climate that was going on at that time? I mean, there's so much that, that happens at a personal level. So even um, I would go to France and just to experience sometimes the hostility towards Towards me, so I didn't always wear hijab, and this is sort of after Central Saint Martin's, before university. I remember sort of walking towards the Paris Mosque because I wanted to say my Friday prayers, but I didn't wear a headscarf, and I, I just remember the French men saying to me, "Oh, what have you got in your bag? A bomb?" Because I was getting my headscarf out of my bag, and I thought wow, I, there's just there's no winning, you know, whether you wear a headscarf or you don't wear a headscarf or, you know, just being Muslim is a problem. Um, and I made the decision then that I just need to do what I want to do and not care really what happens with the politics or people's, because there's no pleasing. And this was before 9-11. And in terms of engaging wider audiences, I mean, as you know, with the Shrajoni project that Sangini has been working on um, over the last six months, it really is about for us creating a visibility of Islamic art, of Muslim women, of 
you know, a nurturing connection for Muslim women who have never really engaged with Arabic calligraphy in a way that was beyond reading ultimately, but for them to take a pen and to create words um, that they've read, that they've understood um, and to, you know, have a connection through this, this discipline. Um, but also to, you know, at a, at a community development level to show wider audiences that, you know, we are here, you know, whilst, you know, as from a populist point of view, we take up such a small percentage of the population, um, but very much so still, you know, a part of society and a contributing part of society and one that holds, you know, dear gems of intellect and, um, you know, cultural contribution. So with, you know, those kinds of ambitions in mind from, from our side, as a, as a practitioner, have you seen that kind of wider engagement more so, or do you think that that still needs development and what kind of responses from wider audiences have you seen, if you have any? I mean, I can only speak from a personal experience, but um, I can just illustrate, for example, um, I had my solo show at Leighton House Museum uh, and I presented quite a, a groundbreaking work in terms of animation and calligraphy and telling a story with my calligraphy and I had music composed by Nitin Sawney to go with it and then we commissioned a dance performance so that there were live performances in response to my animation which was on the, the theme of freedom because I think as Muslim women we are constantly being asked are we free you know it's been challenged and while the the show I felt was really well received and was very, very successful the only sort of press coverage I got um, at the time was from Channel 4 who wanted to interview but what they wanted to interview me about was my headscarf not about amazing show that I worked so hard to put together and it's and I think it's down to that visibility issue again like when are we it's hard because we are Muslim women but we also seen for what we're doing not for what we just look like and it's really a real challenge I think the still ongoing challenge and I'm personally finding it difficult I work to be taken seriously by a wider uh, non-Muslim audience. One final question um, for you today and thank you so much again for your time and for just Thank giving you. me that insight. I've really enjoyed hearing you talk about your work um, and your, your views as an artist um, in the areas that we've discussed. What of your experience over the course of your career, um, what, of, what of your experiences over the course of your career have had the greatest impact on you? I know you just spoke about the exhibition that sounded absolutely phenomenal um, and, you know, whilst you were interviewed about your headscarf, I'm sure had an in enormous impact on audiences who were able to enjoy that as well. But what other experiences over the course of your career have had the greatest impact on you? Well, I mean, there is definitely um, an interest and I think it's, I mean, I'm not sure how to answer that question, but because it's not just necessarily one thing that comes to mind, but um, I th think in this context, perhaps it's more useful to, to be aware that there, we have to learn maybe as Muslim women to, or as Muslim artists, to be able to engage with the art world and how that works in order that we have a more positive experience. So, um, 
I mean, I'm still trying to work things out myself, you know, and I don't have all the answers, but there are examples, you know, where people, people reach out to me all the time for work and to do things. So I can't, you know, um, complain. There's definitely opportunities out there, but sometimes it's difficult to see them or to, to understand how to engage with them or access them, I think. Um, but I mean, I really enjoyed working with Google and being challenged to work in virtual reality for the first time and also for them to show interest in what I do was quite um, remarkable and you know they created this short film uh, you can see it on YouTube it's called Soraya's Story A Calligrapher's Journey and it kind of it shows that traditional backdrop against the the new technology the virtual reality which is i mean i am genuinely interested in the apparent contradiction between my craft and, and new technology things is it a contradiction or is it a meeting of worlds and an exploration of how those worlds can interact with each other well, they work very, very differently. So you know, one is very slow, very fast. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one's manipulated by hand, the others by buttons, and it's it's so it's very. I think it is that they are very opposing, but it's bringing them together. All the skills. It's more. It's not necessarily bringing the tools. It's understanding that the tools are different. Um, and that they do and achieve different things. It's learning how to um, use new tools in my work and to accept and embrace the limitations and the possibilities of each one. 